in, in a public session. And um, we're on section 94, amendment number 119, the name of the Minister. Acceptance of this amendment involves the deletion of section 94 of the bill. It's a new section. 190 to 198, inclusive of the later, will be discussed together. Minister to move. I move, Chairman. Um, amendment number 190 refers to section 94 and provides for applications for the adjudication of legal costs to a legal costs adjudicator. It's primarily amended in order to make improvements to the flow and practical workability of the section. Key amendment is found in subsection 5, which now includes paragraphs that provide for a solicitor to make an application to the adjudicator in relation to a bill of costs provided by a barrister, which bill remains unpaid in whole or in part by their mutual client. This is in recognition of the fact that usually the business flows from the client to the solicitor to the barrister, not directly from the client to the barrister. Therefore, it makes sense the solicitor should be able to make applications where this is the case. This, of course, will not be true in all cases, as there is some direct access to barristers by clients such as architects, engineers, etc. Subsection 10 also has a couple of small additions to allow for rules of court to provide for the manner in which written submissions may be provided, the steps that may constitute an attempt to agree a bill of cost before having recourse to the adjudicator. Section 95 is that some duplication removed and some minor improvements made to the text. The section continues to provide for the matters to be ascertained by the adjudicator in the course of adjudication, such as what work was actually undertaken by the legal practitioner, what would constitute a reasonable fee for that work, how long it took to do the work, and whether it was appropriate in the circumstances the charge uh, was made for the uh, work concerned. Section 96 provides the powers of the legal cost adjudicator to inspect documents, to summon and examine witnesses, to apply to the High Court for the enforcement of a summons, and to adjourn hearings so that disputes may be referred to mediation or another informal uh, resolution process where appropriate. A new addition to the section, which had been intended at the time of publication of the bill, is originally that adjudication shall continue to be held in public unless the adjudicator is of the opinion that it is in the interest of justice that part or all of the hearing should be held in camera. Discretion is also being given to the adjudicator to conduct an adjudication uh, without an oral hearing where it is expedient and the interests of justice, but only with the consent of the parties. I believe the Chair would have received a note from the Bill's Office in relation to changes that had to be made to cross-references within Section 97. I trust those references are now in order. The section provides a detailed framework for the hearing and determination of legal cost adjudications. It includes provision that determinations be made subject to the legal cost principles set out in the schedule. It provides that fees for disbursements and other fees must be furnished with receipts and other documentary evidence that any item not previously flagged to the client in the notice of cost will not generally be chargeable by the legal practitioner. In a departure from the current taxation process, the section also provides that the adjudicator shall write a report of the adjudication setting out his or her reasons for the determination upon the request of a party or where it is considered to be in the interests of justice. The latter is intended to bring greater transparency and consistency to the legal costs process. <clears throat> Section 98 provides for the effect of a legal cost adjudicator's determination, including a modernised version of the long-established so-called one-sixth rule, whereby the cost of the adjudication process will be charged against any legal practitioner who is found to have issued a bill of cost that is determined by the adjudicator to be at least 15 per cent higher than it should be. I have received written representations from lawyers' representatives asking me to increase that margin to at least 20 per cent, but I am of the view that 15 per cent is appropriate and fair, representing, as it does, a less than 2 per cent tightening of the traditional margin. The key amendments being made to this section are the insertion of a 20-day grace period before the adjudicator's determination becomes final. I will discuss this further in a moment. An amendment to clarify that the 15% rule applies only to legal costs charged by a legal practitioner to his or her own client, as opposed to party and party costs. And the assertion of a new subsection to allow for the cost of the adjudication to be set off against the aggregate amount owed to the legal practitioner as determined by the adjudicator. The possibility of a referral of a question of law to the High Court in the original section 99 remains unamended. Section 100 is entirely new. It is inserted to reflect current practice in the Taxi Master's Office, whereby an objections procedure allows the Taxi Master to briefly reconsider disputed legal cost determinations. This is a com common sense filtering mechanism which works well in practice. It helps to keep the number of referrals to the High Court lower than they would otherwise be, and this, of course, is desirable. Parties seeking to utilise this mechanism must do so 
within 14 days of a determination, just ensuring the proceedings are not unnecessarily long drawn out. Section 101 provides for a review of determination of a legal cost adjudicator. This is a slightly amended version of the original Section 100 in the Bill uh, as published. The key change here is a change in terminology from appeal to review to actually reflect the process intended by the section, which gives the court power to confirm the determination of the adjudicator to remit the matter back to the adjudicator for another determination in line with the court's decision or to substitute its own uh, uh, determination. The only other change is the insertion of a new subsection 5 to carry over the test already provided uh, for in section 27 of the Courts and Court Offices Act 1995, but inadvertently omitted from the Bill, whereby the High Court must first be satisfied that an adjudicator had, has erred in his or her determination to the extent that it is unjust for the High Court will allow a review of that determination. The original sections 101 and 102 in relation to privilege and the power for the chief legal cost adjudicator to specify the form of documents required for the purpose of this part have not been amended. Sections 106 to 109 of the original bill are standard transitional provisions to ensure a smooth handover from the taxi master's office, new office, to the legal cost adjudicator. The only amendments here are found in section 106. They're purely technical in nature. Amendment 19. Eight is the final amendment uh, for today. Schedule 1 of the Bill provides for the principles relating to legal costs to be applied by legal cost adjudicators when making determinations on disputed bills of costs. The key principles are that only those costs that have been reasonably incurred and are reasonable in amount will be permitted. In considering what constitutes a reasonable amount, the adjudicators will consider a number of relevant factors, including, for example, the complexity and difficulty of the legal work concerned, any relevant skill or specialist knowledge required, the amount of time labour and labour spent on the work, the number and complexity of the documents uh, required to be uh, drafted or examined. The key change made uh, from the uh, schedule published in the Bill are as follows. Firstly, the deletion of subparagraph 1c, which was recommended for deletion by those with expertise in the legal cost area. Secondly, the deletion of the original subparagraphs 2, L and M, which are considered unnecessary. The latter have been replaced with a new subparagraph 2L to cover the use of outside expertise in the legal services provided and whether such costs uh, were necessary and reasonable. And that, that uh, uh, Chairman, concludes uh, all of the uh, various final amendments to be considered uh, this afternoon. Okay. Anyone offering on any of those? No. Okay. Well, let's go through them then. Um, uh, section uh, 94, Amendment 190, in the name of the Minister. This is a new section, 190 to 198, inclusive related, uh, and the Minister to move. Uh, that the new section, the question is the new section, bill itself is agreed. Agreed. And then we're taking out section 94, and the question has to be put that section 94 stand part of the bill. Agreed? No. No. So that falls. Um, section 95, uh, Amendment 191, in the name of the Minister, new section, I discussed 190, that this new section be there inserted, agreed? Agreed. And uh, the question is, again, we're taking out the section, the section 95 stand part of the bill, agreed. and that, I, that section falls. Uh, section 96, Amendment 192, in the name of the Minister, it's a new section, I discussed 190. Question is that, that's how the Minister to move. I move. The uh, question is that the new section be there inserted. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. And then we are taking out this section 96. The question is that 96 stand part of the bill, and that's Neil, and that's false. Section 97, uh, amendment number 193, it's a new section. I'll just go through 190. Now, I understand there are typographical errors there that the Minister has advised us about three typographic, type, typographical error corrections to amendment 193, which are we're being requested to accept by the committee when the amendments are reached. Uh, corrections to Amendment Number 193 are as follows: Cross-reference in Subsection A should be referred to Subsection 9. Cross-reference in Subsection 9 should be referred to Subsection 8. Cross-reference in Subsection 10 should be referred to Subsection 8. Is that, can we agree with that? Agreed. Agreed. Okay. So we'll make those changes. And Section 193, um, Amendment 193, or uh, let's discuss 190. Uh, Minister to move. I move. The question is that the new section there and South agreed. Agreed. I will take out the, the, the section 97, the old one, that, and the question is that section 97 is in part of the bill. Neil. And that's not agreed, so the section falls. Section 98, amendment, number one, sorry, amendment 194, in the name of the Minister. It's a new section I'll discuss with 190. Question is the Minister to move. I move. The question is the new section there and South agreed. Agreed. 
Kate. Agreed. Um, sec uh, and then we'll take out the section. And the question is that section 98 stand part of the bill. Is that agreed? No. 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 Yeah, so that falls. Uh, section 99, that section 99 stand part of the bill. Agreed? Agreed. agreed. Uh, section 100, this is a new section. Uh, it's already discussed with 190. Uh, the question is that this new section, the Minister to move, sorry. I move. The uh, question is that new section there and started agreed. Agreed. And the question is that section 100 stand part of the bill. Yep. Neil, and that falls. Uh, section 101, um, Amendment 196, it's a new section now discussed with 190. Um, Minister to move. I move. The question is that new section there and started agreed. 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 The question is that section 101 stand part of the bill. Neil. That's a tall, is it? Tall. That's a tall. Okay, it's a new section, I'm told, yeah. Sorry, agreed. that's a new section, yes. Section 102, the section 102 stand part of the bill agreed? Agreed. Section 103, the 103 stand part of the bill agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Section 104, the 104 stand part of the bill agreed? Agreed. Section 105, the 105 stand part of the bill agreed? Agreed. Section 106, member 197, in the name of the Minister, this is a new section, so I discuss 190. Minister to move. I move. Um, the question is that this new section be there in self agreed? Agreed. And then we must we'll take out the old one, so that, that question is that section 106 stand part of the bill? Neil. Neil. So that falls. Section 107, that section 107 stand part of the bill agreed? Agreed. Section 108, that section 108 stand part of the bill agreed? Agreed. Section 109, that section 109 stand part of the bill agreed? Agreed. Section 110, that section 110 stand part of the bill agreed? Agreed. Section 111, that section 111 stand part of the bill agreed? Agreed. Section 112, that section 112 stand part of the bill agreed? Agreed. Section 113, that section 113 stand part of the bill agreed? Agreed. Section 114, that section 114 stand part of the bill agreed? Agreed. Section 115, that section 115 stand part of the bill agreed? Agreed. Section 116, that 116 stand part of the bill agreed? Agreed. Section 117, that section 117 stand part of the bill agreed? Agreed. Section 118, that section 118 stand part of the bill agreed? Agreed. You can stop me if you like. So, section 119, that section 119 stand part of the bill agreed? Agreed. Section 120, that section 120 stand part of the bill agreed? Agreed. Section 121, that section 121 stand part of the bill agreed? Agreed. Section 1 agreed. Section 122, that section 122 stand part of the bill agreed? Agreed. Section 123, that section 123 stand part of the bill agreed? Agreed. Now, uh, the schedule. Um, you finish the final miscellaneous provisions part of the bill. I mean, it just because I'm obliged to bring it up at this stage, or I'm just very encouraged by what Minister Shatter said just before the break. Um, but I just wonder whether an amendment w will be included to the effect that um, any rule of law prohibiting um, uh, either a barrister or a legal practitioner from instituting or prosecuting legal proceedings to recover professional fees or to them is hereby abolished. I mean, you've said that you, it was your intention to look into that. Uh, yes, we're looking, we're looking at that in the context of uh, quite clearly in circumstances where uh, a member of, of the bar was being directly uh, consulted by a client, uh, they should be able to recover fees. I, I also regard it as an entirely anomalous and a historical accident that if a member of the bar has properly undertaken work on the instructions of a solicitor, and if they don't get paid, they uh, are left effectively in limbo beyond making a complaint to the Law Society, uh, which I think is entirely inappropriate and unfair, and it may have been a, an interesting concept in the 1800s. So we're looking at how we, we best address that, um, and uh, I would hope we would have an amendment to the report stage. And then it may or may not be necessary to include that that's without prejudice to any rule relating to liability for professional negligence, because the two were linked at one point. I know that, well, recent House of Lords decisions, maybe 100 years ago, separated the two. But Looking at how we best address that, and of course, I know I said earlier, it's an extraneous issue, um, but the, the, the VAT issue which is a revenue matter, it's not for us, but it is an issue in the context of people finding uh, unexpectedly they might be levied for that for fees that they may never get paid. Uh, so, I mean, there's, a, there's an obvious issue that arises. That's an issue that affects uh, the professional work of people, not just in the bar as it could in these circumstances, but in other areas. So, so I can't, as Minister for Justice, modify our fact legislation. We are, we are going to look at just uh, how we deal with this to ensure uh, there aren't unexpected or inten unintended consequences that uh, uh, impact on people. Okay. Sure. Right. So we're on to Schedule 1, um, Amendment number 198, in the name of the Minister. And acceptance of this amendment involves the deletion of Schedule 1 of the original bill. This is a new schedule. It's already discussed with 190. And the question is that the new schedule be a schedule to the bill. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. And then we have to take out the other one, so that schedule won't be a schedule to the bill? No. Neil. Neil. So that's, that falls. Um, schedule 2, that schedule 2 be a schedule to the bill. Agreed? 
Schedule 3, then. Schedule 3 be scheduled to the Bill. Three. Three. Um, that this be the title to the Bill, an Act to provide for the regulation of the provision of legal services, to provide for the establishment of the Legal Services Regulatory Authority, to provide for the establishment of a Legal Practitioners Disciplinary Tribunal to make determinations as to misconduct by legal practitioners, to provide for new structures in which legal practitioners may provide services together with together or with others, to provide for the establishment of a role of practising barristers, to provide for reform of the law relating to the charging of costs by legal practitioners and the system of the assessment of costs relating to the provision of legal services, to provide for the manner of appointment of persons to be senior counsel and to provide for related matters. Is that agreed? Agreed. So we have concluded consideration of the bill. So uh, on the... Con yeah, I, I thought just, you might. Yeah. The general, just very briefly, Chairman, I, I want to thank members of the committee both uh, today and on our previous committee stages for engaging with the bill for some of the interesting discussions that we've had. I do think it's important that uh, the fo this forum is used to enable uh, uh, amendments that are suggested from outside this House to be teased out. I, I obviously uh, would be of the view that the mere fact you're handed an amendment doesn't mean you should automatically table it, but I think it's been a very useful uh, opportunity to tease through aspects of the bill. Uh, it's part of the process of ensuring we get the best possible legislation at the end of the day. And uh, we've, I've already referenced some areas in which we'll bring further uh, uh, amendments forward on report stage. I, I should say that in dealing with one or two issues on report stage, particularly dealing with um, uh, limited liability issues, uh, we may have to, uh, in during the report stage, recommit uh, so that there's the adequate time uh, to discuss them. I'll also try and ensure that uh, when we have our report stage amendments, they're published in reasonable time so that people, again, have an opportunity to consider them uh, and to consult on them and more than adequate opportunity to uh, identify the issues on which they should kick me around in a, obviously a constructive and, um, and uh, helpful way so as to ensure that at the end of it all we get a really good piece of legislation. Okay. All done. Okay. As consideration of the bill has been completed in accordance with the standing already, seven, the following message will be sent to the Clerk of the Dáil. The Select Committee on Justice, Defence and Equality has completed its consideration of the Legal Services Regulation Bill 2011 and has made amendments to there too. Again, I would like to thank the Minister and his officials for attending and uh, colleagues here for uh, being so constructive and for being so helpful to me in the job I had to do here. And the Select Committee is adjourned. Thank you very much.